Okay, Steve, finally got you a booster. Again, I apologize for this being such a um, CF uh, operation, uh, waiting for everything from uh, ice storm to plating to COVID, uh, everything in between. So I, I really apologize. Uh, let's go over a few things on your boosters. Uh, as I showed you in photos, we've got you another fitting up here. Uh, the previous fitting had been, had been brutalized and the incorrect bleed screw is in place. Um, air filter assembly has been rebuilt. Got your new vacuum diaphragm inside. Uh, your slave cylinder was in good condition. Um, and the plating is, uh, is per original with the um, cadmium and the black is zinc oxide. Now then, uh, let's see, when you're uh, doing the final tightening on this uh, fitting here, this is my test fitting, not, you don't get this, but anyway, when you're doing the final tightening with your fitting here, be sure to use these flats, put a big wrench on there, and hold this stationary. This jam is designed to keep this in place, but not to overcome uh, the uh, kind of force that can be applied with a um, good sized uh, 19 millimeter wrench on the fittings. Um, Let's see, you've also rebuilt your vacuum fitting, your vacuum uh, check valve, it's over on the bench. Um, let's see, okay, what we're going to expect. We got uh, in, uh, input and output, and we've got, uh, got our vacuum. So first up is gonna be vacuum. Uh, these two gauges are gonna go uh, rise together when my vacuum pump is turned on, and then when the booster is activated, this gauge will maintain uh, vacuum and this gauge will go down to zero when the booster is fully activated. And this gauge right here is coming off of this test fitting right here. So anytime you want to test your booster while it's in service, just put a, a vacuum gauge right here and press on the brakes when the engine's running. And the more you press on the brakes, the closer to zero the, boot, the uh, gauge will read. And then when it's reading zero, your booster is fully activated. Coming over here to the pressure side, we've got input and output on the hydraulic. These two gauges are tied together. This gauge will go up to uh, reads max pressure here and this gauge is going to go up and uh, read final input pressure as supplied by my master cylinder on the tester. This gauge is going to go up and these will rise together. They're tied together. This one goes up and reads maxes out here and this will read final output pressure uh, when we've got the booster activated with uh, vacuum. Now then, uh, most people don't realize this, but the boosters, when inert, with there's no when there is no vacuum going to them, the boosters are inert. They don't do anything. So you're going to have the same pressure in and the same pressure out. And I'll show you that right now. So we've reached max. We've reached max pressure here, max pressure here, max there. And they're all the same. 350 within gauge error, considering the machine's about 50 or so years old. Now then, hit with the vacuum. pressure we check for leaks see if we got any leaks here got any leaks in the bleed screws no leaks 
I'll leave it on the test machine overnight uh, just to check for seepage. But uh, we've got 900 psi, well, 350 and then 900 or so out here. We would have some seepage by now. We don't. Um, this bleed screw it does not need to be messed with when you bleed the brakes. Uh, bleed the brakes uh, first here, then do your lap around the car, left rear, right rear. Um, um, right rear left rear right front left front and then do the then bleed the uh, booster uh, last and that should take care of it sometimes you may, need to make two laps around the car but uh we got you a good booster and i sure appreciate your patience with me thank you very much